This is a five minute video resume. It's a summary of the different types of work that I've done over the course of my lifetime. I started out in life as an artist, with my first oil painting in an art gallery at the age of 13. As soon as I graduated from high school at 17, I was commissioned to paint a series of murals in a landmark hotel. The work was fun and paid well when it was there, but it wasn't very consistent, so I gave it up at 18 and joined the Air Force and became a jet engine mechanic. While I was in the Air Force, I made extra money by doing paintings of the planes that I worked on, and then I'd sell them to the pilots. When I got out of the Air Force, I became the art director for a local television show on Channel 11. And this is also where I got my first experience in producing television commercials. In 1980, I started experimenting with high mileage carburetors. It seemed like the more I learned, the more people wanted to know, and before I knew it, it was in newspapers across the West Coast. So eventually I wrote a book about the topic, which I made $50,000 off of. With all my carburetor knowledge and experience, I decided to open a carburetor repair shop. And it wasn't long until I had four. A bad carburetor can get expensive. If yours needs rebuilding, at Carburation Technology, we can do that for a little more than the cost of a tune-up. The television advertising brought me more business than I could handle. I had four stores, but I had a problem finding qualified mechanics to work at them, so in the end, I wound up closing three of the stores and selling the last one to my remaining employees. It's still in business today. After that, I dabbled in concert promotion for a while. It was a lot of fun, and I met a lot of interesting people, but I didn't see much of a future in it. Next, I came up with an idea for a television show where people used their home video cameras to make their own TV commercials, kind of like America's Funniest Videos versus The Classified. Anyway, it was moderately successful here in the Northwest, but then I took it down to California to a CBS affiliate in Bakersfield where it was fairly successful. My next project was a feature film called Loon. It was a 95-minute romantic comedy that never made it out to theaters, but it did make it out to the video stores. It was a low-budget production that also served as a fundraiser for the homeless. Loon is now available on video cassette. Loon is a 95-minute modern fairy tale about a lovable homeless man and of his struggle to reclaim his past. Loon isn't a Hollywood production. It was produced by a cast and crew of everyday people from the Puget Sound area. And one half of the production group's profits go to the homeless. Loon was also scored by renowned Northwest musician Danny Deerdorf. It's a movie you and your family will want to watch again and again. For a copy of Loon, stop by Stadium Video or your nearest Blockbuster video store. Well, the next turn in my career path was kind of a fluke. Ken Huff was a friend of mine who was also my original partner with Carburation Technology. While I was making television shows and movies, he was becoming very successful in the mobile home business. He had a problem though. He was selling a lot of homes, but he needed somebody to pull permits and coordinate the installation of the homes that he was selling. He sold me on the idea that setting up a mobile home was a lot like making a movie. And he was right. You pull the permits and you coordinate a bunch of contractors to do what they're supposed to do in order to get the project finished by a certain date. I'd only planned on stepping in to help him out of a bind, but uh, about five years and a hundred mobile homes later, I was still doing it. Over the years of working with B&K Homes, I became acquainted with their lender, Norm Davis, who owned Westar Financial. In 2001, Norm offered to partner up with me in a company that uh, renovated houses and built new houses. Quite often, we'd take the ugliest house on the block and turn it into the most desirable. During these years, we also bought a number of lots that we broke up into short plats. The creativity and ingenuity that went into making these old, ugly houses beautiful came in handy when we started building new homes. The unique features that we incorporated into our new homes set them apart from our competitions, and we never had to wait too long for them to sell. Then 2008 came along and took us both by surprise. Our customers couldn't get financing anymore. Norm and I decided to quit taking on new projects until things got better. I waited quite a while and they didn't get better. So in 2009, I decided to accept a job offer from Ben Lesky, who I worked with at B&K Homes. He decided he wanted to build new houses. Sadly, my friend and business partner Norm 
passed away suddenly from pancreatic cancer in 2009. So I continued to work for Ben, building higher-end houses all the way through 2017. Ben was smart. He'd pick up distressed properties from the banks for very cheap prices, build a house on it, then offer the houses for sale at under market value. He managed to sell everything I built for him, usually before it was completed. So in most cases, I worked one-on-one -on -one with the buyers, implementing their choices in colors and upgrades. In 2011, I started building in Elk Heights, a subdivision in Buckley that went back to the bank after only seven houses had been built. Over the next two years, I built 17 more houses in Elk Heights, and in doing so, I established a great relationship with the city administration. So when I mentioned to him that I had a friend that had a client that was looking for a location to grow marijuana, I was very surprised at how enthusiastic they were about helping. The city planner pointed out that there was a nursery on the outskirts of town that had recently come up for sale that would be a perfect location for this. The city planner, the city administrator, the city building official, and even the mayor all wanted to know what they could do to help. I was asked to run the project, which will eventually have three 15,000 square foot grow buildings on it. One of the first things I did as project manager was negotiate with the adjacent property owner to donate the shaded one acre piece of land to our project. I help out with other 502 projects where I can, but my primary focus is still building upscale homes. And here are some pictures of the last house I completed. It shows some of the features that make it uniquely desirable. <music> 